Hi everybody, this is Stu, AG6AG, with another video for you. Guess what? We're going to show you how to configure FL Digi to use ambient analog uh, communications. We do this by configuring it just to use the native sound card that exists in the computer. When you transmit something, it plays it through the speakers and all you need to do is hold your microphone keyed up so the microphone picks it up and you transmit it. And when it receives, when the radio receives something, it plays out in the open air and this microphone inside your computer picks it up and decodes it. Hey, what's easier than that? And a special bonus, I show you how to use the messaging program and everything else. So, hey, enjoy the video. All right, everybody. So let's get started with configuring FL Digi for what I call analog mode. Analog mode uh, is really easy to set up because we're actually just going to use the sound card for the laptop to do everything. And we're going to basically, when we want to transmit, we're going to toss a mic over the radio and key it up and play uh, whatever's coming out of the speakers into the radio itself. And the radio, when it uh, responds back, when somebody responds back, the audio will play ambiently into the room and the computer will pick it up and decode it. So we're going to use ambient audio to encode and decode. Kind of cool. A couple things we want to look at first. We're going to want to look at our sound setup. So let's take a quick look at how to do that. Um, we're going to go over the um, little icon for the speaker down here, and we're going to right-hand mouse click it. And you would think that you'd open up the mixer, but no, we're going to open up sound settings. Under our sound settings, we're going to want to look at, okay, so the output device we have chosen is our Realtek high-definition speaker, built into the uh, Lenovo here. And our microphone is the microphone array, because there's actually two microphones in this Lenovo. Kind of a cool setup. But I'm going to want to make some uh, changes possibly, but at least verify some stuff. So I'm going to click on device properties under the output section. And this is going to show me some basic stuff, but down here under related settings is additional device properties. And this is going to take me to the old uh, setup screen from the older versions of Windows. And this has a lot more controls in it. So I'm just basically going to take a look at my levels. And, you know, I think 51 is probably pretty good, but we'll test that. Um, but 51 for our volume at this point is probably just fine. Uh, Dolby, eh, I don't think I need to worry about it. It's set to on by default. Um, let's take a look at advanced. 24-bit, 48 hertz, that'll work. I'm not too worried about that at all. We can click test. And that gives us some tone so we can hear the levels and stuff like that, which is which is important. We want to be able to hear it, right? Because if it's not outputting anything, it's not going to go out on the radio. All right. And let's see. Oh, exclusive mode. We want applications to be able to take exclusive control of the device. And it is going to give exclusive mode applications priority. So that's both good. We don't need to worry about uh, spherical sound. That's something that works inside with this particular type of uh, sound card. Uh, however, it's set to off, and yeah, that's what we want. We want to tune off, turn off any kind of auto leveling or anything as well with this. All right, so we're good with our output device or our speakers. Now let's take a look at our input device. And the neat part here is I can actually look at my level. My level looks pretty good, but there are some things that I want to make sure um, that uh, are properly set. So I'm going to go under the device properties as well with this. I want to go to additional properties. And again, we're back to that older style control panel uh, setup. So this is really cool. So now... Um, Listen, we don't want it to listen, right? 
Uh, and uh, the reason we don't want it or care that it listens is we don't need it to feed back through um, into our audio as well uh, when, we're, uh, bas when it's basically receiving something. Our levels, 93 might be a little hot, uh, but, you know, we can always go in and adjust it. I'm just out of experience. I want to, like, take this probably, I'm going to take it down to about 85, if I can get it there. Let's see. It's always so hard. Come on. Uh, 84 is close enough. Um, enhancements is important. We do not want any enhancements whatsoever, so we're going to disable all enhancements, okay? And then under advanced, uh, let's see, same thing right? Allow uh, applications to take exclusive control of this device and give exclusive control to vice, devices that are requesting priority. All right. So I'm feeling pretty good about our audio setup at this point. So at this point, I believe that the laptop is ready for us to go ahead and begin to configure FL Digi. So I'm going to go over here to FL Digi and we'll double click it. And it's going to come up with a wizard now, it's going to ask me all sorts of questions. It wants to know the station call, the operator call, operator name, the type of antenna, uh, the QTH for the uh, location of the station, the station locator, which is the maidenhead grid, what state you're in, etc., etc., etc. For this particular setup, I really don't need to put a lot of information in here to make it work the way I want it to for the analog, uh, mostly because I'm probably not going to be using analog with HF. It doesn't make a lot of sense. Um, with the analog, the ambient analog setup that we're doing, it's typically used for VHF, and it's typically used for transmitting forms or messages, uh, things like that, where the only thing you really need to worry about is, of course, your call sign. And that's going to go in twice. And, you know, you can put your name in here if you're... Uh, running a tactical station out in the field, you can use a tactical name. I'm just going to use my name for this example. Um, I can put all this stuff in. doesn't really matter, but I don't need to. Uh, I'll select my state of California. I can also select my county. Interestingly enough, it's going to use this county information uh, for... Um, uh, the contest mode uh, modes that are available in it. Uh, we don't necessarily need to use it, but it's kind of neat that uh, it sets us up. I've now clicked next, and it's setting me into the device setup. Now, remember uh, the names of those devices that we worked with, with the sound uh, control stuff? Well, there they are. I'm going to turn on part, uh, port audio by clicking there, and guess what? That's all I need to do for analog mode. That's it. That's all I need to do for ambient analog. I'm going to click next again. I'm not going to use any rig control at all. Now, in a later video, I'm going to go in and show kind of how you set this up. But this is kind of tough. You need to understand what rig you have. You need to understand, um, you know, how to wire it up to the rig and stuff like that. That's really, if I was going to show it, everybody how to hook up every radio, I'd have to do thousands of videos. So uh, in, I promise in a future video, I'll go through how to get your rig control and use the uh, something like a, a uh, uh, sound link or something like that to tie into the radio. But for now, let's just go with the uh, analog ambient mode. It's the easiest to set up and it's the fastest way to get you started. So I'm going to select next again. Uh, and again, the tabular data, I don't really care about, right? Because this is, I'm, I'm not going to be using this for any kind of thing that needs the tabular, da tabular data. Okay, now look what popped up. I have a firewall request, and this actually listens on ports. And it actually transmits on ports as well to communicate with other programs. In our particular case, we're going to want to allow it, and I'm going to want to allow it for private and public networks um, because these ports will only be listening when the program is on. 
Uh, and if I had the program on, chances are I'm using it and need to use it. So I'm going to make sure that all the check boxes are checked to allow, and I'm going to allow access. All right. Okay, so we've done the initial setup on this. Let's go ahead and uh, full screen it. Now, I am going to turn around and close the program. I'm just going to hit the X over here. It's going to ask me if I want to quit, and I'm going to say yes. The reason that I do that is I've just set up the base configuration. If I don't close the program, I could possibly crash because um, the program save stuff is in a different piece of memory. Remember, guys, this is open source, so uh, there are a lot of times that you have little glitches that we just have to work through. So let's go ahead. We'll go back into FL Digi, and I'm going to change a couple of things just out of preference. Uh, the waterfall down here has a times one. Uh, at full screen, I change it to times two because that gives me uh, three kilo, um, uh, kilohertz of um, audio to be able to look at, and that's really all I have available to me in the program. Now, you see all that blue down here in the waterfall? You see it? See how it's like, make, you know, you got some yellow, some blue. Okay, so I'm going to do something I rarely do. I'm going to stop talking and watch what happens. My goodness, it all disappeared. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, that means that the program is picking up the ambient noise in the room. And that's what we want in analog ambient mode, okay? So, what about our sound output? What about what we're going to turn around and use to put uh, a signal onto the microphone? Well, up in the far right corner here is a little rectangular button, and it says Tune. I'm going to click that. Oh, listen to that. All right. So I'm getting a nice tone that tells me that, you know what, it's working. I hit tune again and it stops. That means everything is functional. All right, we're getting close. So typically if you're using this on FM, uh, under uh, on in an FM mode, let's say on simplex, on like... Uh, oh, I don't know, two meters, you're not going to want to use like PSK31 or other uh, uh, operational modes that uh, are designed for HF. Now, when uh, we all get together and do our uh, emergency readiness test, uh, operational readiness test for the county out here, we use MT63 and we use the 200 or 2000 L version of that. So I'm going to select that. And down here in the corner, my protocol now says MT632KL. Okay. And for us, that's what we want to use. Now, you can choose any of these modes that you want to to communicate with someone else. Uh, I'm just using this mode or setting up for this mode because that is the mode that we typically use when I'm doing um, analog ambient uh, communications with FL Digi. Now, another important thing is whoever you're talking to, there's a little number down here between these arrows. And that number is 1,500 in this case. Now, if I go up and you see the mouse here as I move it, you see how the that marker moves with the mouse? And then if I take it away, you see that I have two, um, two red vertical lines, and then I have a red horizontal line connecting them at the top. So this is the area that it's listening to, and it's going to transmit on when we go to do things, uh, like uh, send messages and stuff like that. Um, so uh, it's important that you coordinate with whoever you're going to communicate with that number. Um, if it's 1,500, great. If it's 1,400, great. If it's 1,600, great. Doesn't matter as long as it matches the other side or the other people that you're trying to communicate with. All right, so we've come a long way. Let's go ahead and uh, give an example of doing a, uh, just a regular um, oh, uh, ad hoc message. 
So I've clicked into the blue portion of the uh, uh, of the windows here, and I'm going to just type in hello. Helps if I spell it right. World. And with that, if I wanted to send that, there's several different ways I could do it. But the easiest way just to send a quick message is to go down to the purple button that's on the far right side that says TX. And it looks like a play uh, with half a pause next to it. I'm going to click on that. Watch and listen to what happens. Now, what it did, if you can see up here in the top window, you may have to zoom in a little on the video. It sent my Hello World and DEAG6AGK, which, which remember when I put my call sign in, that's what the call sign was for. That's why we put it in. Okay, if you're using a tactical, you can use a tactical. It really doesn't matter. Uh, remember, though, if you're using tacticals, the same rules apply. You need to identify every 10 minutes with your actual call sign, regardless of whether you're using a tactical or not. Um, anyway, so that's basically getting the basic portions of this set up and working. Now, remember, I talked about. FL message, and I talked about uh, FL wrap. So we need to do a couple configuration changes if we want to send forms and stuff like that across FL Digi. So I'm going to go over here to configure on the pull down, and I'm going to go to miscellaneous, and I'm going to select NBEMS. Now we call that NBEMS, um, and that's just because the acronym can be a little difficult. But uh, from here on out, out, out bleh, excuse me, see, it even messes up my mouth. Uh, NBEMS will be how I will identify the NBEMS data interface, okay, from here on out in this particular video. So, ironically, with the newer installs, everything that you need is pretty much enabled. You can also open the message folder, and that has to do with the um, FL wrap program. So I'm going to go ahead and click to do that, okay? Um, and then down here, it's asking where the FL message program is, okay, right down here. So I'm going to go ahead and say locate. FL message, and remember I said let's make sure that we know where the uh, uh, program's installed. Well, this is why. I'm going to go in. I'm going to locate program files x86. There's FL message, and right there at the top, FL MSG, that is the executable, I'm going to select it, and it's going to put it in there for me. I'm all set to go. Now, I also can go over here all the way across the top to auto start. Under auto start, there are several different additional things I can add, such as FL amp and things like that. I can also add additional programs. So let's say that I wanted to automatically start FL message um, when I launch the program, right? I can select locate and I can select FL message, okay, the same way I did it in the other spot. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to click save, however, because if I don't click save, if I just close out, the settings that I make don't, uh, don't take place. The only other thing I want to look at is under waterfall, I want to take a look and make sure that monitor transmitted signal is checked. On newer versions of FL Digi, this is checked on a normal install. Older versions, not so much. So I'm going to select Save on that, and I'm going to close, and I am configured. So let's go ahead and close this. And then we'll reopen it if I click it in the right spot. There we go. Now, this is launched. I'm going to go ahead and minimize it. And let's go ahead and get FL message set up. 
Okay, it's asking me an, an important question here. It's asking me if I am a service agency or if I'm a communicator. Uh, as the amateur radio operator that's going to be using this as an amateur radio operator, that makes me the communicator, that makes me the expert. All right, and see over here? Again, this one wants network access too. And again, we're going to allow X access to all the networks that it knows about. Just like that. All right. It's asking me a lot of the same questions and some different ones. Uh, in this particular case, I'm just going to put my call in. Um, I'm not going to put my, oh, let's put my name in. Why not? But my address, all that stuff, I'm not going to put in. And you notice we've got tabs across the top date and time, it's asking me for the date and time format. I usually just use the default. Um, if you are communicating with another entity and you want, uh, they want it in a different fashion, go ahead and change it. Uh, files. So, wrap. Remember, we talked about that. Let's see. So, we're going to open the folder when exporting, right? And naming files, call sign, and the serial number, and the date and time is going to be local time. Uh, I'm not worried about a Mars Rouster. Um, word wrap is at 72 characters. File transfers do not compress the file. All right. Radiogram information. I leave this as the default. ARQ. I leave that as the default. The most important setting here, the UI setting, is the user interface equals expert must be checked or you do not get the complete uh, form here. So let's go ahead and we'll close this because we're done. And there's our message window. We'll move it off to the side. And let's go ahead and let's launch FL Wrap. Guess what, guys? There is no configuration to FL Wrap. Okay, so... You would type your message in there, however you want it, uh, fill out whatever you want. Um, but important, now, remember down here when I said we're going to change to this, the MT63 2KL. Why? Because that's what the group of people that I send messages uh, in ambient analog mode use. Um, well, if I take a look now down at my form here, look at what it says down at the bottom. It does not match that protocol. So I need to open the pull down and I need to go down and find the M63 2KL and select it. Okay. MT63 2KL. It, you can use any protocol that you want that you agree on with whoever you're sending it to. Just make sure that it matches on all programs and wrap does not need any of that all it does is you drop the file here and it does the compression okay so I'm going to just minimize that now some people like to have that running when they're working in a EOC uh, I'm it's up to you. I usually don't launch it because we don't send files during drills. We may send files during real emergencies. That's a possibility. So it's, it's something we're just going to have to turn around and take in stride. All right. Well, that really is about it as far as the setup goes to get this going. Um, I'll tell you what. I'm going to give you a quick bonus just because I've got a few extra minutes left here. Um, let's go ahead and I'll show you how to use the message program. So I'm going to go to forms and I'm going to go to ICS forms and I'm going to select ICS 213. Why am I selecting ICS 213? Well, because that's the form that I want to use in this, uh, this demonstration. Uh, it's typically the form that we use when we're communicating between EOCs. Uh, and the form is a standard form that's used uh, by FEMA. So it works out well that way all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to pretend I'm going to send this to, uh, well, let's send it over to Net Control. And in our particular case, um, our Net Control tactical is um, ECSS. And I want to send it to net control there, so I'm going to specify net control. 
Um, who's it from? Well, it's from me. Now, uh, if I had a tactical, I'd put it here. Okay. However, uh, I'm, I'm not running a tactical. And my position is operator. Uh, I can abbreviate that any way I want. I'm just going to use OPR. Um, the subject is test for uh, video demo. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click here to automatically set the current date and the current time. And then I can type my message, whatever that might be. So uh, this is a test. And I'm going to put my, I'm going to sign it down here with my call sign. Uh, so just in case I did use a tactical, they know whose call sent it. Uh, as far as approved and position, if I was sending a uh, important message for like the for law enforcement or the fire department or something like that, I would probably put someone's name here. In our particular case, we use a identifying uh, number or call sign. I'm just going to put my call sign, and my position is operator. And that's basically it. Now, what else do I want to do? Okay, well, I probably want to save this before I send it. So I'm going to select Save As, and it's going to default. It's going to basically use my call sign, the date, and the time code, and we'll just save it right here into the NBeams file ICS messages. Okay, there you go. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and send it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my microphone that's uh, on a simplex station, and I'm going to announce it first. I'm going to say, this is AG6AG. I am sending a digital message. I'm holding the mic over the laptop with the mic keyed. Now I'm going to announce again, this is AG6AG. I have completed sending my digital message. And that's it. Now we can just leave this running like this. And if someone sends us a message back that's in response to this, all sorts of things are going to happen. Browsers are going to pop up. Um, I, I can't really demonstrate that uh, in the video. I just don't have time. But um, try this on your own. Get a friend to set up on the other side, and you guys can send messages back and forth. Obviously, don't claim anything's an emergency or anything in the message. That violates all sorts of stuff. But um, you're allowed to use these forms, and you're allowed to use these protocols. You know, uh, just maintain within your license, and you will be fine. Anyway, thanks. Man, that was fun to do. I really enjoyed that. I hope uh, I hope I have the opportunity to do uh, more videos for you guys. This is Stu, AG6AG, and I'm going to bid you 73. Hey, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that video. It was fun for me to put that one together. And it was fun to be able to do the bonus regarding some of the emergency services stuff. Anyways, we're going to try to have more videos in the future. Um... Uh, Actually, I'd like to do another FL uh, Digi video that deals with HF configuration and stuff like that and actually using it. Maybe we'll do RTTY. I don't know. What do you think? Leave me a comment. Anyway, this is Stu, AG6AG. 73 to all you amateurs out there and have yourself a great time out on the way.